in the previous video we talked about the disadvantages of having three sets of data set training validation and test data so the, the disadvantage is that when you divide your data into three parts you really have very little data remaining to train your models and hence the performance of the model takes a hit the other disadvantage is your parameters are tuned based on a specific set of records which is present in the validation data and if the validation data has let's say outliers for example the parameters might get wrongly tuned and hence we will not go ahead we do not go ahead with uh, that concept of dividing the data into three sets of training test and validation so what do we do instead we instead do a process of cross validation so cross validation is used instead and this is used with almost all popular algorithms this is usually used with algorithms which are very flexible in nature so all the non parametric algorithms they are very flexible in nature and they have high variance and hence a parameter tuning is mandatory for them so cross validation is generally used for non parametric models which have a high variance so let us see the different methods involved in cross validation we will talk about two methods the first method is leave one out cross validation or lwcv in short and the second method is k fold cross validation we will talk about the second method in a following video so in this video we will only talk about leave one out cross validation so what is leave one out cross validation this is very similar to what we just discussed dividing the data into training validation and test but instead of dividing the data so we will still divide the data in train and test we will still have the test data set this is mandatory we will still have it so this is only the training data and we will still have a test data but from the training data we will not divide it into into two parts training and validation instead of having two parts training and validation of comparable sizes what we will do instead is if we have n rows in the training data set we will take n minus 1 rows we will take n minus 1 rows and we will train our model on this data set and the last row the nth row that will become our validation data so we will treat that as our validation data so we will build our model on n minus 1 data points and we will predict or we will tune the parameters we will decide what value of min bucket to select based on the feedback that we get from the validation data so whichever min bucket parameter gives the best value of accuracy on the validation data we select that so this removes the disadvantage of not having enough records to train the model as we have almost all but one record to train the model but still we have the issue that what if the outlier is present in the nth row that issue still exists so what we do we iterate this process again and again so this process is iterated again and again so for example if this is the data we start with in the first iteration we will take 1 till n minus 1 as our training data and our validation data will be the nth row in the second iteration we will take 1 till let's say nth row except the n minus 1 row so n minus 1th row will come here so let's say our n is 10 we have 10 rows of data so we will take 1 to 9 and the 10th row will be the validation then we will take 1 2 3 all the way till 10 except 9 except 9 9 will come here similarly we will take all except 8 and 8 will come here and this process will repeat so ultimately you will see all the rows coming here one at a time and all the way till 1 so we will run the modeling process 10 times here or n times where n is the number of rows present in the data set so that that is why it is known as leave one out cross validation why leave one out because we are leaving one of the rows out as the validation data and hence it is known as leave one out cross validation 
So this removes both the disadvantages that we talked about in the previous video. It removes the disadvantages that we do not have enough records to train the model. In all these iterations, we have 9 records to train the model out of 10. So we have only excluded one row. So we have enough data to train the model and it also removes the disadvantage of what if the outlier is present in the validation data. So we are keeping each row into the validation data. So even if one or two of them is an outlier, it wouldn't make much of a difference because we are keeping each row one at a time as the data in validation data set. And the final, the final error of the model or the final accuracy of the model will be taken as the average of all errors. Average of all errors that we make here. So we, there are 10 models. Each of the models will make some error. We take the average of all the errors that are being made here. Similarly, accuracy also we take the average accuracy out of all the accuracies that we get here. So this is the process of leave one out cross validation, which is beneficial because it gets rid, gets rid of both the disadvantages that we talked about in the previous video. But this also suffers from one disadvantage and which is probably why it is not used. So it has one big disadvantage, which you might have noticed. So the disadvantage is that it takes a long time to run. It is time taking. Now why it is time taking? It is time taking because you are running n models. So a total of n models are being run. So imagine if you have 10,000 rows, you would be running 10,000 models or you would be running the same model rather 10,000 times. So 10,000 iterations of the same model will be running and obviously that will take a lot of time to run. So this is the only disadvantage of leave one out cross validation and a big disadvantage I would say this is and this is why it is not used in the industry. So we will see the next method of cross validation which is k fold cross validation which is very popularly used and it removes all the disadvantages that we have talked about so far. Let's talk about k fold cross validation. Quick recap we have seen leave one out cross validation in a previous video and the disadvantage of it. Leave one out cross validation what do we do there? We take n minus one data points as the training data and the nth data point we take that as the validation data. This is one of the iterations and we repeat the iteration by changing the data which goes into the validation data. So we take each individual row and one at a time we take that as the validation data. So we run n different iterations. So n iterations of the models is run and finally we aggregate the output. So this is the final error. This is the final error that we take as the leave one out cross validation error. Now this has a disadvantage that we are running n iterations of the model. So imagine if you have 10,000 rows in your data, you would be running 10,000 different iterations. So this would be painfully slow and hence we cannot proceed with leave one out cross validation. So an alternative to that is k fold cross validation, which is very popularly used. So all non-parametric models, in fact, they all, almost always go through a process of k-fold cross-validation. So this can be used to tune the parameters also. So for example, we were talking about the main bucket parameter or any other parameter in any algorithm. We can always tune the parameters. Tune the parameters is, is used to denote finding the right value of the parameter, which neither underfits the data nor overfits the test data. So that can be done using k-fold cross-validation. So let us see what is k-fold cross-validation. So if we have n data points, let's say we have n data points in our training data. So we will still have our test data, which is a general process we will always follow. We will always have a test data set. Now from the training data, what do we do here? We divide our data sets into k-folds. Folds means k parts. We divide our training data set into k parts. k is usually taken to be 5 or 10. So let's say we are assuming k to be 5 here. So I will divide my n rows into 5 parts. Let me call it fold 1, fold 2, fold 3, fold 4 and fold 5. And almost always these parts are comparable. They are equal. So if you have n points, 
if you have 100 points you will have 20 in each of them so these are the five folds that we have now if you have taken k to be 5 now what do we do we start with some iterations so in the first iteration we take the first four folds as our validation data as our training data sorry so let me write here training and validation so we will take fold 1 fold 2 3 and 4 as our training data and the fifth fold will be the validation data set so we will build a model on this data and allow it to predict on the validation data or if you are tuning our parameters we will train our model on this data and we will find out the best value of min bucket which gives the best accuracy on this this fifth fold now we repeat the process so we will have f1 f2 f3 and f5 here and we will take f4 as the validation data similarly all possible iterations we will do and you will see that we will have a total of five iterations so f4 we will have f3 and f2 and finally we will have f1 and here we will have and finally f2 f3 f4 and f5 so these are the different iterations we will run now if you look this carefully you will see that we are running only five number of times only five iterations we are doing so this is not as bad as leave one out cross validation where we were running it n number of times so here we are running only five times and your final cross validation error your cross validation error will be one by five of all the errors that the model makes so you take the average of the error now this can be used for parameter tuning you can tune your parameters based on what is the parameter which in general gives the best core on the validation data so for each value so let's say we are talking about a parameter let's say this is the parameter that we are talking about so for each fold or for each iteration from here we will plot the accuracy so let's say this is the accuracy on y-axis so for for the first iteration let's say this is how it looks like this is the accuracy for the first iteration so accuracy on first fold let's say so if you see the parameter when it is small when the parameter is small your model overfits this is where overfit fitting happens and this is where underfitting happens so if the parameter value is small your model overfits this is the best this is the sweet spot similarly we will do for the other folds also this is on f1 so this is for this particular iteration i have drawn similarly for other iterations you can have similar graphs let's say this is for f2 f2 so for this iteration i have drawn the green one then you can have others as well you can have let's say one more this is blue one is for f3 let's say pink one is for f4 and you will have the last one which is for f5 so let's say this is for f5 so finally you aggregate the results and on an average you will draw a line which will be the average of all of them so let's say this is the average of all of them this is the average line and you will find out what value of parameter is best for this average so this is the parameter value this is the parameter value which is best for all of them so this is the parameter that you will finally select for your model so this your model will be trained based on this particular value of parameter and using that model you will predict on your test data so this is the process of k fold cross validation quick recap in k fold cross validation we divide our data into k folds these k folds are generally equal in size so if you have 100 rows of data and you divide your data into five folds you will have 20 data points in each of the folds you take k minus one folds as your training data and the kth fold as your validation data and you repeat this process until each fold becomes your validation data so you will see that you will be performing k iterations in total and finally you aggregate the results so the accuracy the or the error the overall error will be average of errors made by all the five iterations or all the k iterations 
K-fold cross validation can be used for parameter tuning. So what we do is we plot the accuracy with respect to different values of parameter. And finally, we average out the result. And for the average result, whichever parameter works out to be the best is finally selected for the model. In the next video, we will see how to implement K-fold cross-validation in R.